Hey, what's going on guys? Today is Sunday and I leave for Bronco Roundup Tuesday. If you don't know about it, it's the MEB Bronco Roundup. It's held in Tremont, PA. And it's one of my favorite events of the year. That being said though, I always try to get the Bronco in, you know, pretty solid shape for it. We've got a lot of stuff done that I'll run you through in the video, but I also have a lot of stuff to do. So I'll keep you posted and I'll run you through all of what I'm doing. So this is with the high steer in, the axles in. My only issue I'm running into is some interference here between my track bar and the end of my ram. I go and move that bracket, this one here, down this way, and move this bracket all the way down here, this way. But I'd rather not, if I can, I'm gonna try to move the hole in towards the bar and be able to trim off the backside of that bracket. So I'm looking, it's gonna be tight though still, but uh, whatever I could do to avoid that, whether it's trimming this U-bolt a little bit, taking the washer out up here, every little bit counts. And if I could avoid having to go and uh, cut this all up, that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, let's check it out and see. So that contact was a bit of a pain. Everything's loose right now, so I can rotate it. But what I was able to do was cut down that bracket and move the hole in. And now I don't have contact even past bumps. So that's pretty sweet. You know, the only place where it could possibly hit is if you rotate it down, you can catch on here. This isn't tight either, so that'll be up higher, that bolt. But uh, when it's tight, really, it should stay pretty much in place. And if it's not the case, if I all of a sudden start getting a lot of rotation, I'm just going to cut this perch back a little bit. So I think it may even be beneficial to keep it from spinning. So I don't know. I'm not too worried. But that's that. That was the biggest uh, pain I think I had. Pain points are now. I've got it all set up. Time to tighten it all up and uh, get to the next step because time is a ticking. This is another angle of it. And uh, you can see even better the amount of clearance I have. So that's pretty cool. It's not a ton, but that's again, past bump and it's more than enough to get the job done. Next up on the axle install is bump stops. Older axles, I think it's like a 94 axle, have them. New ones are cast. <clears throat> so I'm drilling a hole, drill and tap that, and uh, then I'll have adjustable bump stops so we don't have the tire eating the leaf spring. I am swapping to disc brakes on the Sterling 1025 I have in the rear of the Bronco. Yeah, that's that for the brake install. I'll do a little video after I bleed them and uh, That'll be it, I think. Oh, so we got Ben just hanging around. That's what I do. And we have the truck, which hasn't been washed underneath in forever. So just doing a little walkthrough on that. And I'm gonna come through and power wash the entire thing and then hit it with Dawn through the foam cannon. And try to clean that up before moving on to the body. So let's see what it does. I should really do this more often. All right, the question is, will Dawn dish soap foam cannon? It does foam cannon. <laughs> it foam cannons really well. As you can tell, it's a bit lower. It's also a bit dirty. The lowering was from when I went and put my new Dana 60 in with the shave kit, truss, high steer. I'll link that video down below if you want to check it out. And the dirty is from sitting under a pine tree and just general off-roading. So first up, I got to give this thing a bath and then we'll get to the nitty gritty. Do 
gonna move this truck last night and the emergency brake wouldn't hold. There was a lot of extra room in it. I bled the truck. I thought there was just a lot of adjustment and it was. And it turns out it's not really much you gotta do down here. I read you could do it down there, but the way I did it was, uh, don't mind the mess in here. I just cycled my emergency brake a handful of times. And now it's an adjustment. So self-adjust those old GM calipers. So uh, that's pretty dang cool. I'm pretty happy with that. So I don't know if you guys saw, but I have a couple of Optima yellow tops sitting in there. And the reason is because I need to put them in here. This truck had some kind of issues where it was dying, not holding the charge, not quite sure. And I let it sit on the lift for, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks without starting it. Did the glow plugs, started right up. Today, I got a little ambunctious and went to go start it without the glow plugs running. So uh, I did it once, cranked it for a few seconds. And by the end of that crank, you heard it was starting to die. And, you know, a set of good batteries shouldn't have one crank in them. And now they're completely dead. So uh, those batteries are going in. And I could officially say that these ones are not being drained by something on the truck, but more so just bad and not holding a good charge. So add that to the list. Those are going in soon. On the list of other things to do today, besides the batteries, is body work. I'll let you guys guess why. And since I lowered the front, I need to go and trim the front. I'm gonna do something roughly like this, follow this line, trim this out. And it kind of makes this a little prettier. I don't like how this transitions to, from cut to uncut. This is kind of just gross, but uh, you know, that's what I had to do. What are we out here doing? Fixing rust. Rust and trail damage, lots of it. Lots to do. First side cut. I just gotta go trim the front bumper and get this pushed up. Body work more. <laughs> I'm over here cutting my second fender. My dad's working on the other side in the back. And we're slowly but surely crossing things off the list. You got this little quarter patch in place. Put it there with some zip screws and then weld it in. Now time for some bondo. This is going to be a recurring theme for the bodywork section of this. We're not going for perfect. Just going for color matching and basically Bronco shaped. So we're out here, been working on the Bronco all day. We're thinking about painting tonight and uh, probably a good thing we didn't. That is disgusting. Ugh. That's gross. Goodbye, buggies. <laughs> Ready for paint. Oh. We are one day away from going. Tomorrow's Tuesday. I'll be leaving. And I'll give you a walk around on the Bronco, but we're in rough shape. Luckily, I focused on something important. Fresh badges. So those will be going on. And we got a lot of work to do. So body's getting worked on in the back. Just going for painting it all black. Got a few oddball mechanical things up front. And I'm throwing some edge trim on here to keep anyone from cutting themselves in my cuts. But uh, coming along, definitely becoming crunch time. Got Ben out here giving me a hand. My dad was helping me yesterday. Should, uh, you know, should be pretty decent. Let's keep cracking. So residual oil, by the way. Truck was sitting on the lift for a while. Uh, ran the glow plugs, started right up on these old Napa batteries. But then the other day I tried to crank it without running the glow plugs, cranked for an extended period of time, like 15, 20 seconds maybe, and uh, died. 
So I know there's no drain on the batteries. I know they just don't hold the charge. So you got these Optimas and I got them for a real good deal. Only thing is, is they're not the proper size for my truck. When they're fully engaged there on the, the lock, there's a little gap in the back. So what I'm gonna do is I got a rubber grommet I'm just gonna stick in the back here. Should be able to tighten them down and we'll be good. I got two because the truck's got duals and uh, let's put them in. So we're preparing to do one of the worst paint jobs of all time. Uh, this is a rush patch Bondo job and the goal is just to get the truck black again. So uh, taped up everything we don't want overspray on in the area. We got some turbo cans to do it. And we're gonna spray this thing, try not to use a lot of light because the bugs come out to the light. So let's get going. All right, let's see what these tall boy rust -Oleans are all about, these turbo cans. Again, we're going for black, not good. Gonna need a few coats on that bad boy. Ben's over here working diligently. We're taping up this side for a quick paint. This side already has its first bug in it. And you can see that nothing is straight at all. But again, wasn't the goal. So the bug's starting to get pretty bad. We went and, uh, <laughs> holy shit, man. Uh, bugs are getting pretty bad. So we closed the garage door, we're trying to do it. Just do light coats. Yeah. Trying to do this in the dark, keep them out of here. And the reason we're rushing, like I said, is tomorrow I'm heading down to the East Coast Bronco Roundup. And we want the truck to be one piece in color. That's crazy. That can's cool, right? <laughs> Those turbo cans? That's cool. So, uh, yeah, that's why I brought you guys along to show the worst paint job ever performed. However, turbo cans are cool. Oh, yeah. Let it rip, Ben. Not too much. We don't want any runs. Oh, you're talking to a professional. Professional rattle canner. Yeah, with no experience in turbo cans. I don't trust it. <laughs> so when I said I wanted the Bronco black, this is pretty much the reason why. It almost looks good right now with the light off it in the dark, as you guys see on video. So we're in the garage having a beer as the paint sets and uh, we get ready for another coat. I'm interested to see how the turbo cans do and like how the finish comes out. I know the bodywork itself is bad, horrible by anyone's standards. It's bad by our standards. Semi-good. Anyway, <laughs> the closest thing to semi-good is this can and this is gloss, not even semi-gloss. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm interested to see how it comes out, how the actual paint dries and uh, it might be cool for a project down the line. As the night goes on, we're uh, putting a few more coats on. We're doing our best to make sure our bad paint job is as good as it possibly can be. And uh, yeah, we'll see. After this, we have some clear we'll throw on. And uh, that'll be that. I will say though, the truck is turning black and that's what we wanted. I'll probably also have to wash the ass or uh, use acetone to wash the overspray off everything else tomorrow, but that's okay. Great. Time for a little bit of clear. We have these new uh, Rust-Oleum cans with a selector up front and uh, oh look, yeah. You could spin, you get a bunch of different options. And uh, Ben's gonna give it a shot for the first time. Let's see. More Rust-Oleum clear to try and salvage what we can out of this paint job. So. 
salvage. This is. It may not look good, but it might be shiny. Just wait for the Mecham Auto auction. You'll see it. That's what we're going for. Yep. Shell quality. I'm using a hand light, by the way, not to attract bugs. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're working with here. Hard to see, but the uh, clear has actually done a good job with the paint in filling in the orange peel. Again, not a quality job. However, I think it is reacting in certain areas where you can see like the super orange peel up here is a bad spot. And you kind of see the edge where like down there looks good. Up here, it does not. Over here it looks great. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we put more clear on and that'll go away, but that looks rough. But then again, the truck is black, so as long as it sticks, we'll see. So this is the next morning. Uh, still kind of wet. I touched it a little bit and it left a little fingerprint, but I don't know. Again, super ugly, but it's now all black. Same with this side. So I'm actually going to uh, peel off the paper, blow this dust off, and uh, do the last few things I need to do before we get loaded. Good from far, but far from good what we were going for so got these new badges finally slapped them on there and uh touched up the spot or two on my hood again you can easily see where it was but now it's at least not white so gotta fix that mirror but uh after that i just gotta go touch up a few things and we're ready to go Bronco Roundup, here we come. I'll give you guys a walk around when we get to the campground, but uh, the truck's done, and uh, this is, well, close enough done. I'll finish it up there. But this is clearly one of the perks of a full-size rig. It's a full-size dog cage in there. Cooler, a couple chairs, all kinds of goodies, so can't complain about that. All ready to go. No crank, no start. New crank position sensor I just put in. Chased all kinds of shit. Did test, make sure I was getting high pressure oil at the top of the head. Uh, my tack was moving when you cranked it. I had fuel pressure. Put in my spare IDM, started right up. So, I think I found my issue. We're finally all loaded up. And it looks like a pretty solid uh, setup here. A little bit of dust still on the Bronco, but hopefully it blows off as we're driving. But uh, I'm digging it. I'm ready to hit the road. We're finally all loaded up and trucking. And uh, boy, do I have some stories. Quite an eventful afternoon. And uh, maybe I'll recap this whole thing. I will give you guys an update soon. But uh, first we had to stop for some supplies. We got Biggie going for a walk too. We'll leave the truck parked there. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll give you an update when we get back in the car. Okay, so we made it to the East Coast Bronco Roundup. Here's our cabin here, where I'm staying with Kara, my buddy's gonna join us. And here's the Bronco, which is needing a bath because it's covered in Bondo dust. I finished everything up, got done with the world's worst paint job, go to get this thing loaded on the trailer, no start. So I'm like, oh, crank position sensor. Nope, that wasn't it. I had a new one right on hand, that didn't do it. Had pressure to the heads. Um, disconnected what was my uh, IPR truck still didn't run so I'm going through and I'm like you know what I have a spare IDM let me throw that on and that worked the IDM I put on though was uh, had intermittent issues at some point so I went I'm going to AutoZone they actually have them it's like 300 bucks I'll keep it as a spare and uh, worst case I'll return it when I send mine in to get rebuilt but uh yeah this is the Bronco all new and improved got the high steer on the bottom that was our latest big project did all the trimming up front on the bumper and the fenders. Got our new Power Stroke Bronco badges, super shiny in the sun. Did our paint touch up in the rear. We've got our disc brakes underneath with a emergency brake sense or uh, emergency brake too. We have all the high steer stuff all tied up. That'll be another video. 
on that as well. And uh, yeah, interior all cleaned up, have a few odds and ends to do in there, but pretty much all, uh, all good. I'll walk you around and I'll walk you into the cabin. Definitely needs a wash, but not too bad. Oh, and the lowered up front, which is cool. I like the stance a lot more. Not usually an AutoZone fan, but this is going right in the glove box and I'm digging them today. Since we're here, might as well go show you the cabin too. We're at Twin Grove Campground and RV Park. Everything comes with a little uh, grill, fireplace, picnic table. I brought the rocking chair, so if we're hanging outside, then when we make our way inside, Got a little kitchenette, TV, fridge, biggie. I have her with Kara, and she's a good pop. You'll be seeing her a lot on the channel. And uh, she's a little off. You might be able to put your eye on it, and if you can, let me know in the comments. And I'll tell you why we named her Figgy. Here we have two bunk beds. That's where my buddies from college are gonna stay. We got a Figgy room that I brought with us. Figgy's gear. And then a little table area, bathroom with everything you'd expect, and then a master bedroom. So, pretty cool overall. And I think that's where I'm gonna end the video. If you guys wanna follow along for the rest of the Bronco Roundup, be sure to subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a good one.